Hello and welcome to day 300 of our Bible in a Year Challenge. My name is Sandra. I'm going to be your host for today. Welcome. We are committed to reading and fellowshipping with God's Word every single day of this year, 2024. Please kindly go ahead right now and share this broadcast with your friends, family and loved ones. Encourage them to join us as we read our Bibles today. Kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Ireleba. Let's get started. Let us say a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today with grateful hearts, thanking you for the opportunity to reach day 300 of our Bible reading journey. We are in awe of your faithfulness guiding us through every step and revealing your truth to us through your word. As we prepare to read today's scriptures, we ask for your Holy Spirit to lead us, opening our hearts to receive the wisdom, the comfort and the instruction you have for us. Lord, let your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path today. May it strengthen our faith, deepen our understanding, and transform our lives. We pray that the truths we encounter will guide us in our daily walk, drawing us closer to you and helping us to live in a way that reflects your love and your grace. We commit this time to you, Lord, asking for clarity, peace, and a renewed sense of purpose as we read and meditate on your word. Thank you for your constant presence and for the power of your living word. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Day 300, October 27th, 2024. 365 days Bible reading. Old Testament, Habakkuk 1, 2, and 3. New Testament, Titus 2, Psalms and Proverbs. Proverbs 26, 1 to 12. Old Testament NIV version Habakkuk 1 verse 1 to 17 The prophecy that Habakkuk the prophet received Habakkuk's complaint How long Lord must I call for help but you do not listen or cry out to you violence but you do not save why do you make me look at injustice why do you tolerate wrongdoing destruction and violence are before me there is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore the law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. The Lord's answer. Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed. For I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe. Even if you were told. I am raising up the Babylonians that ruthless and impetuous people who sweep across the whole earth to seize dwellings not their own. They are a feared and dreaded people. They are a law to themselves and promote their own honor. Their horses are swifter than leopards, fiercer than wolves at dusk. Their cavalry gallops headlong. Their horsemen come from afar. They fly like an eagle swooping to devour. They all come intent on violence. Their hordes advance like a desert wind and gather prisoners like sand. They mock kings and scoff at rulers. They laugh at all fortified cities. By building earthen rams, they capture them. Then they sweep past like the wind and go on. Guilty people whose own strength is their god. Habakkuk's second complaint, Lord, are you not from everlasting? My God, my Holy One, you will never die. You, Lord, have appointed them to execute judgment. You, my rock, have ordained them to punish. Your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrongdoing. Why then do you tolerate the treacherous? Why are you silent while the wicked swallow up? those more righteous than themselves. 
You have made people like the fish in the sea, like the sea creatures that have no ruler. The wicked foe pulls all of them up with hooks. He catches them in his net. He gathers them up in his dragnet, and so he rejoices and is glad. Therefore, he sacrifices to his net and burns incense to his dragnet. For by his net, he lives in luxury and enjoys the choicest food. Is he to keep on, keep on emptying his net, destroying nations without mercy? Habakkuk 2, 1-20 I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. The Lord's answer. Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets, so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay see the enemy is puffed up his desires are not upright but the righteous person will live by his faithfulness indeed wine betrays him he is arrogant and never at rest because he is as greedy as the grave and like death is never satisfied he gathers to himself all the nations and takes captives all the peoples Will not all of them taunt him with ridicule and scorn, saying, Woe to him who piles up stolen goods and makes himself wealthy by extortion? How long must this go on? Will not your creditors suddenly arise? Will they not wake up and make you tremble? Then you will become their prey, because you have plundered many nations. The peoples who are left will plunder you. For you have shed human blood, you have destroyed lands and cities, and everyone in them. Woe to him who builds his house by unjust gain, setting his nest on high to escape the clutches of ruin. You have plotted the ruin of many peoples, shaming your own house and forfeiting your life. The stones of the wall will cry out, and the beams of the woodwork will echo it. Woe to him who builds a city with bloodshed and establishes a town by injustice. Has not the Lord Almighty determined that the people's labor is only fuel for the fire, that the nations exhaust themselves for nothing? For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Woe to him who gives drink to his neighbors, pouring it from the wineskin, till they are drunk, so that he can gaze on their naked bodies. You will be filled with shame instead of glory. Now it is your turn. Drink and let your nakedness be exposed. The cup from the Lord's right hand is coming around to you, and disgrace will cover your glory. The violence you have done to Lebanon will overwhelm you, and your destruction of animals will terrify you. For you have shed human blood, you have destroyed lands and cities and everyone in them. Of what value is an idol carved by a craftsman, or an image that teaches lies? For the one who makes it trust in his own creation, he makes idols that cannot speak. Woe to him who says to wood, come to life, or to lifeless stone, wake up. Can it give you guidance? It is covered with gold and silver, there is no breath in it. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Habakkuk 3, 1-19 Habakkuk's Prayer A prayer of Habakkuk the prophet on Shigionoth. Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, Lord. Repeat them in our day. In our time, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. God came from Timan. The Holy One from Mount Paran, His glory covered the heavens, and His praise filled the earth. His splendor was like the sunrise. Rays flashed from His hand, where His power was hidden. Plague went before Him, pestilence followed His steps. He stood and shook the earth. He looked and made the nations tremble. The ancient mountains crumbled and the old, age-old hills collapsed. But He marches on forever. I saw the tents of Kushan in distress, the dwellings of Midian in anguish. 
Were you angry with the rivers, Lord? Was your wrath against the streams? Did you rage against the sea when you rode your horses and your chariots to victory? You uncovered your bow, you called for many arrows, you split the earth with rivers. The mountains saw you a wreath and wreath, torrents of water swept by, the deep roared and lifted its waves on high. Sun and moon stood still in the heavens at the glint of your flying arrows, at the lightning of your flashing spear, in wrath. You strode through the earth, and in anger you threshed the nations. You came out to deliver your people, to save your anointed one. You crushed the leader of the land of wickedness. You stripped him from head to toe. With his own spear, you pierced his head when his warriors stormed out to scatter us, gloating as though about to devour the wretched who were in hiding. You trampled the sea with your horses, churning the great waters. I heard, and my heart pounded. My lips quivered at the sound. Decay crept into my bones, and my legs trembled. Yet, I will wait patiently for the day of calamity to come on the nation invading us. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The Sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights for the director of music on my stringed instruments. New Testament NIV version Titus 2, 1-15 doing good for the sake of the gospel you however must teach what is appropriate to sound doctrine teach the older men to be temperate worthy of respect self-controlled and sound in faith in love and in endurance likewise teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live not to be slanderous or addicted to much wine but to teach what is good then they can urge the younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind and to be subjected to their hus to be subject to their husbands, so that no one will malign the word of God. Similarly, encourage the young men to be self-controlled. In everything, set them an example by doing what is good. In your teaching, show integrity, seriousness, and soundness of speech that cannot be condemned, so that those who oppose you may be ashamed because they have nothing bad to say about us. Teach slaves to be subject to their masters in everything, to try to please them, not to talk back to them, and not to steal from them, but to show that they can be fully trusted, so that in every way, they will make the teaching about God as Savior attractive. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age while we await the blessed hope. The appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. These, then, are the things you should teach, encourage, and rebuke with all authority. Do not let anyone despise you. Psalms and Proverbs Proverbs 26, 1-12 Like snow in summer or rain in harvest, Honor is not fitting for a fool, like a fluttering sparrow or a darting swallow. An undeserved curse does not come to rest. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the donkey, and a rod for the backs of fools. Do not answer a fool according to his folly, or you yourself will be just like him. Answer a fool according to his folly, or he will be wise in his own eyes. Sending a message by the hands of a fool is like cutting off one's feet or drinking poison. Like the useless legs of one who is lame, 
is a proverb in the mouth of a fool. Like tying a stone in a sling is the giving of honor to a fool. Like a thorn bush in a drunkard's hand is a proverb in the mouth of a fool. Like an archer who wounds at random is one who hires a fool or any passerby. As a dog returns to its vomit, so fools repeat their folly. Do you see a person wise in their own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for them. Amen. Lessons learned from the Old Testament verses. Habakkuk 1. It is natural to question God in times of confusion or suffering, but his ways are higher than ours. Prophet Habakkuk begins by questioning why God allows violence and injustice to go unpunished. God answers that he is raising up the Babylonians as an instrument of judgment, even though they too will eventually be judged. The lesson here is that even when we don't understand God's plan, we must trust that he is in control and working out his purposes even through unexpected or challenging means. Habakkuk 2 God's justice will prevail in due time and the righteous live by faith. God assures Habakkuk that although evil seems to prosper, judgment is coming for the wicked. The lesson here is that God's timing is perfect and his justice is certain. We are called to live by faith, trusting in his promises and his timing, even when circumstances appear unfair or unclear. This passage also warns against pride and idolatry, encouraging us to keep our eyes on God. Habakkuk 3 In the face of adversity, we can find strength and joy in the Lord. Prophet Habakkuk closes his prophecy with a prayer of praise, expressing trust in God's salvation and sovereignty even when facing hardships. The lesson is that our circumstances do not define our relationship with God. Even in times of lack or trouble, we can choose to rejoice in the Lord knowing that He is our strength and our salvation. Faith in God brings peace no matter the challenges we face. Lessons learned from Titus 2 Sound teaching and godly living are essential for all believers. Paul encourages Titus to teach sound doctrine and outlines the roles and behavior expected of older men, older women, younger men, and servants. The lesson is that our conduct as Christians should reflect the truth of the gospel. Living with integrity, self-control, and love is important for believers of all ages and roles, as our lives are meant to be a witness of God's grace. We are called to be examples of godliness, both in word and deed. Lessons learned from Proverbs 26, 1 to 12. Foolishness, pride, and arrogance lead to destruction. These verses offer a sharp contrast between wisdom and folly, warning against honoring fools and emphasizing the destructive nature of pride. The lesson is that, Foolish behavior, laziness, and arrogance not only harm the individual but also those around them. The proverb warns against being wise in one's own eyes, which leads to pride and eventual ruin. True wisdom is found in humility and the fear of the Lord. These lessons emphasize the importance of trusting in God's plan, living by faith, embracing godly conduct and avoiding the pitfalls of pride and foolishness. They call us to walk in humility, patience and trust, knowing that God's justice and timing are perfect. Faith declarations from Habakkuk 1, 2 and 3 Lord, even when I don't understand your ways, I trust that you are in control. I confess that I will bring my questions and concerns to you knowing that you are working all things according to your perfect plan. I declare that your justice will come in your timing and I will await you with faith and patience. I will live by faith, trusting in your promises, Lord, even when circumstances seem unfair. I declare that pride and idolatry have no place in my life.
I will keep my eyes on you, Lord, knowing that your justice will prevail. I confess that God's timing is perfect and I will wait with hope and assurance in his goodness. Even in times of trouble or lack, I choose to rejoice in the Lord. I declare that my joy and my strength come from God, not from my circumstances. I trust that he is my salvation and my stronghold and I will praise him regardless of what I face. I confess that God is my strength and he will enable me to stand firm in every situation. Faith Declarations from Titus 2 I will live a life that reflects the truth of the gospel, showing integrity, self-control, and love in all I do. I confess that I am called to be an example of godliness and I will strive to teach and encourage others to live according to God's will. I declare that my life will display the grace of God and I will walk in purity faithfulness and humility as a witness to his transforming power. Faith declarations from Proverbs 26, 1 to 12. I reject foolishness, laziness and pride, knowing they lead to destruction. I confess that I will not be wise in my own eyes, but I will seek the wisdom of the Lord in all things. I declare that I will walk in humility guarding my heart against arrogance and embracing the wisdom that comes from fearing the Lord. I choose to live in a way that honors God and reflect his wisdom in my life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, if you were blessed by the scriptures and you would like to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, kindly repeat this prayer after me, believing in your heart every single word you say. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations if you said this prayer. We are excited to welcome you into God's family. Please kindly go ahead right now, send us an email. Let us know you gave your heart to Christ. Someone is going to reach out to you and pray with you and help you in your new work of faith. The email address is salvationinchrist101 at gmail.com. That is salvationinchrist101 at gmail. Dot com. God bless you. Please remember to share this broadcast with your friends, family, and loved ones. Encourage them to join us as we read our Bibles every day. Kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok at Sandra Boyo Areleba. Thank you so much for being here again today. It's always a blessing having you here. I look forward to another amazing day with you tomorrow. Have a blessed day today. I love you. Bye.